If you click this video, there's a good chance you've considered quitting coding. And maybe that's not what you want, but you just need a little drop of excitement, some energy towards coding, and I'm hoping that is what this video will do for you. Truth be told though, this video is to myself. Responding to my future feelings towards coding because I've been through this before and I'm sure I will again. Where I know this is what I love, but I'm just not feeling it 100%. So to my future Caleb self, I know you wanna do something good. I know you wanna achieve something. And to everyone watching, you want to be the best person you can be. Otherwise, there's not a big chance you would click this video and still be watching. And maybe that doesn't mean being a master software developer and taking over the world. Maybe it just means getting a good job, providing for yourself and for your family, or using your time to work on something good that can help this world. If those things aren't true, then maybe first take some time to reflect on who you are and what you want in life. Have a little internal argument with yourself and win because I know there's a reason you're watching this video. This channel is about coding, but this can be applied to anything. Just ask yourself, why did you start in the first place? But first off, giving up your health or well-being for a coding project is not worth it. There's very few things in life where giving up those things is worth it. Especially if you're continually neglecting yourself over a long period of time, that's really bad. This will start to affect your outlook on life, it'll start to affect your relationships, the way you view yourself, and ultimately it's going to make you a less effective software developer. You're not gonna think as well, you're not gonna retain stuff as well, and you're not gonna be as motivated. If you feel this way, well then you need to ask the question, is coding the problem? Or do I just have a really bad relationship with coding? Maybe it's the case that done right, coding can be something that I enjoy. Maybe I used to enjoy it, maybe I'm not anymore. Maybe we can set up a system where I can always enjoy coding and always feel good about the work I'm doing. An example of a positive relationship with code is where you work on a project during the day that you enjoy and you feel is worth your time. Then you put that project away and you go do other things with your life. You spend time with your friends and family, you work on some hobbies, or just go find new things that you enjoy. When you come back to that project, you're now refreshed and you're able to bring new ideas to the table and progress on whatever you're working on. That is the type of relationship you should strive for when it comes to coding. A balance, something that you enjoy to do and something you look forward to when you're doing something else. But not something you necessarily do all of the time because more than likely that's going to lead to burnout and overall your effectiveness is going to go down. So many times I've fallen in this trap where I wanna be more productive so I put more time towards something. I look at the clock and I'm like, all right, I gotta give as many hours as I possibly can to this project so I can progress. And let's be real, some of this stuff can take a lot of time and a lot of focus. So giving time is important, but you don't wanna give all your time because this isn't going to work long-term and it's ultimately going to prevent you from adhering to any kind of system and it's going to give you a extreme feeling of burnout. Now you got into coding for a reason, right? Coding gives you excitement. It lets you build something that doesn't exist. It lets you work on innovative projects. If you don't feel this way about coding, then Maybe it's not a sign to quit coding. Maybe it's a sign to actually go a little bit deeper because the innovation really comes at the edge of expertise where you get really good at something and you start to think of new ways of doing things or new ideas that people haven't done yet. That's not really gonna happen if you're just kinda exploring the waters or not really going all in on any particular technology or any project you're working on. So I challenge you to be the best at whatever you do and go a little bit deeper so you can start to think of new innovative ideas. Coding brings interesting challenges that will be solved by you. And over time, you're going to build something cool, but you can't do it overnight. But every single day, you want to bring your best self to work. And you can imagine it if you hired yourself, right? Pretend you are your boss. You wouldn't be too happy with your performance if you weren't really giving it your all and you weren't excited about your work. Nobody really wants to work with somebody who doesn't apply themselves. And this ultimately reflects how you're gonna feel about yourself and the work you do. If you're not applying yourself, you're not going to be proud of the work you're doing and it's ultimately going to kill your motivation. So if you're going to do a project, you need to give it your all, that's the rule. But wait, Caleb, I'm already overwhelmed and you're telling me to work harder and do more. It's not exactly what I'm saying. Because I'm actually saying, don't spend more time on a project. Instead, when you're working on that project, actually fully apply yourself. And to be able to do that, you might need to look at your schedule and see what other kinds of things you can reduce or eliminate. I've experienced this feeling of dread when I've packed my plate way too full 
And this prevents me from giving my all to any individual projects. So the best way to think about this, I think, is if you imagine you have a certain amount of energy each day, which we all do. And as you do stuff throughout the day, your energy is depleted. But let's quantify this a bit. Think of it as a video game, right? You have 100 energy. And you go to work, this takes 25 of your energy. You have three side projects which you work on every now and again, and these each take 25 energy to do effectively. You also have a home life, so that's going to take 25 energy. And this doesn't even account for any energy for yourself to work out or, you know, take a rest and do something you enjoy. So right now, you only have 100 energy, but in order to do everything well, you need 125 energy. So what really ends up happening is you end up giving about 20 energy to each one of these tasks. So you give 20 to work, even though it takes 25 to really perform well. You give 20 to each of your side projects, so those don't really end up doing too well either. And you give 20 at home, so you come home and you're stressed out because things aren't going so well there either. The extreme result is that all three of your side projects fail. You get fired, your family disowns you, you get depressed because you're not working on anything, you have nothing, and that's really going to kill your motivation. Plus, at the end of the day, you still have zero energy left for yourself. So going off our rule, anything you do, you have to do 100%. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to devote 100% of your energy to one individual task. That's not what I'm saying. Instead, split up that energy appropriately and only put something in your to-do list if you can do it 100%, meaning full effort, actually care, and try to do your best. So let's say in this example, you keep work right? Your side projects aren't producing enough income to do those full time, but if they were, maybe you could drop work. But let's say we keep work and we work on one side project and we keep our home life. We drop those other two side projects because honestly, we weren't doing that well with them anyways. So what's the point of even doing them? Now we're able to apply 25 or even 30% go above and beyond to each one of these tasks. And we still have leftover energy to focus on ourselves. And that padding is good because if you're always 100, when some days your energy is a little bit lower, it's going to be a little hard to keep up. My opinion is that being below average is not okay, right? We want to be great at whatever we do. So I would rather have one successful project, which would then give me some freedom to maybe make some more successful projects, you know, maybe outsource some. If I have some extra income, I can do these other things I'm interested in. But it starts with having one successful project giving time and energy to my home life so that I have a good home that I can go into work rested. And when I'm done with work, I can go home and enjoy my time at home. This is like living 101. It's the foundation of life. And this video is about not quitting, but I don't think that's a full view because I'm actually promoting quitting. It's just about quitting the right things and quitting the right number of things. So why don't you list out some of your priorities, cross off some that you just say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And then start working to eliminate those. You know, maybe that means putting in two weeks notice at work if you can support yourself off of the different projects you're working on. Or maybe that means tabling a few projects. You know, it's okay. You can have a few more domains that you never end up using as long as you can get that right domain that you end up building a successful project with. And I think a valuable thing to think about is that what you did up until this point doesn't necessarily decide what you have to do in the future. Let's say you've already invested a lot of time and you've already invested a lot of money in a project, but it's not really going the way you want. That does not mean you have to see it through to completion. I think generally it's good to complete things that you can, but we also have to accept the fact that we can't do everything. And if that means putting that project on pause or just saying, yeah, I don't really want to do this project anymore. So you can do really well at a few things then I think that's going to give you the most fulfillment. This is my personal opinion, and I'm sure everybody has their own approach to how they manage different tasks and how they stay motivated. But I think the less, the better, because you can be more effective and exert less energy doing things. This is pretty much what I've been applying to manage my YouTube channel and my personal software development career. So I have way less to focus on and I'm way more excited about the projects that I'm working on. And when you're not sure, you're stuck, think of where you want to go. That'll help you figure out what steps you need to take to continue getting there. And when you look back, it's going to look like you've come a long way, but each step to get to your goals is going to be difficult. 
So take it one day at a time and don't expect to get there overnight. Don't quit. Don't give up. Be the person that the 13-year-old version of you would be proud of. Would they want to grow up to be how you are today? And if you're 13 or younger, well, you're way ahead of the game. But remember not to lose sight of who you are and who you want to be. And if you keep doing this, you can be the type of person to encourage others to work on things they enjoy and be the person they want to be. So this is really my first fully motivational video. I've never really done anything quite like this. So let me know how it made you feel and if there's any big challenges or struggles you're facing in life, what ideas you have on how you can overcome those. Go through that exercise of writing down your priorities and figuring out which ones are not really that big of a priority. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. Peace out.